Hi, Coach Kammer here. Thanks for watching the Our Comeback channel. Women have complained a lot over the past 50 years about how men have treated them. It wasn't easy, but for the most part we listened and made some changes that have made life better for them. But when we complain about how women treat us, they scream, misogyny! Aren't they the ones who are supposedly so loving, caring, and open-minded? Something's wrong here. It's called toxic femininity. Don't go away. Toxic femininity starts with women's idea that they are superior to us. Maybe that goes back to childhood when girls told each other that they are sugar and spice and everything nice. Or maybe that feeling of superiority comes from their incorrect belief that they magically, mystically, wondrously create life. But no matter where it comes from, that's where our discussion of toxic femininity begins, with women's deep belief in their superiority over men. Of course it helps that there are women on that committee, but you know what? I expect the men in this country and the men in this committee, and many of them, believe me, because we all signed on to this letter to uh, demand an FBI investigation, but really, guess who's perpetuating all of these kinds of ac actions? It's the men in this country, and I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. Hi. Can I help? Help? No, you can't help. Help implies that caring for our child is basically my responsibility, and that you're doing me a favor. Go out and try again. Hi. Can I co-nurture? No, you always get the floor wet. I'm proud to be a maker and to support Maker's Mission, to share women's stories and celebrate women's vital roles in the past, present, and future of our country. Despite all the challenges we face, I remain convinced that yes, the future is female. The more amiability and esprit de corps among the members of a policy-making and group, the greater is the danger that independent critical thinking will be replaced by irrational and dehumanizing actions directed against outgroups. Sorry, if some innocent men's reputations have to take a hit in the process of undoing the patriarchy, that is a price I'm absolutely willing to pay. At Hallmark, we are in a rare business, we help to bring people together, make them happy, and give them ways to show how much they care.
Captain Leonard? Captain? Captain Leonard? Mr. Cosworth, I was looking for the captain. And I'll find in him entered notwithstanding. Yes. Pardon me. You trespass, madam. My all appearances, so do you. No. I've come to fetch Captain Leonard's pipe. At his request. Well, then he'll be expecting you. I don't like you, madam. I don't trust you either. I have the captain's best interests. And I'll know why you are here. Well, you may have his interest, but I have his trust. And what do you think will happen if I tell him you tried to violate me on his dining table? I did no such thing. And who do you think he'll believe? No, oh, he'll have you arrested so quick your head will spin. Now get out of my way. Or I will scream. This study uses detailed qualitative data on 55 sexual assault cases that were reported to the Los Angeles Police Department in 2008 and that were subsequently unfounded. Motivations for false allegations fall into five overlapping categories, avoiding trouble, anger or revenge, attention-seeking, mental illness, and guilt or remorse. So you just, you didn't do anything wrong here? I don't feel like I did, no. I mean, he took, you know, my, he took my love and the vows that I made to him when we got married and totally tromped all over that for the first year of our marriage. Disrespected me, disrespected my home, disrespected our marriage. Okay, I understand why you feel justified for putting and him in jail. I'm just asking if you ran a red light in putting him in jail. Did you make statements that weren't true? I may have said that there was there was punching or hitting, and and there was there was not that to my to my recollection well, recollection. You, you but didn't there was maybe say it. You either said it or you didn't. You either said he hit me and punched me or you didn't. Did I, you I say did. It? You did. I did. And did he hit you and punch you? No. Okay. Not to my recollection. You knew it wasn't true when you said it, though. I mean, let's be honest. Yes. You, you knew it wasn't true when you said it, right? Yeah. I've been a public defender for approximately seven years. Domestic violence, I would say, is a good five, ten percent of my of my load. There is a a very high um, level of using the system, abusing the system. Um, by complainants in order to get some other result. I would say the um, reasons, the motives for people to lie as complainants in, in cases, um, custody is just one. It's not even the most common. I would say the most common would be uh, personal vendetta, something that he, he wants to break up with her, she wants to break up with him. Usually it's I'm, I, I keep it real. It seems like it's mostly men defendants, um, but it, it, a lot of times it has to do with he wants to break up, he wants to move, to move out, or he wants her to move out of his house, um, and she gets upset. And nothing gets done about the lies. If somebody is caught in a lie, nothing's done about it. Um, nothing of significance is done about it.
If it was your historian, then I didn't have Kenneth. it. And you said he had already left here. Even so, if he did, ravish you as Lizzie said. Lizzie was wrong. He didn't. Well, he didn't abet you? No. Well, yes, he did, but I wanted him to. We were handfast, and then we got in this huge fight, and he left, and that was... You betted him from lust? You said he raped you of your virtue. I nearly killed the man. And to think I was defending your honor. And now I come to find you claim yourself violated upon finding yourself a child. I was violated, you self-righteous bastard! By someone else! You beat up the wrong man. Where the hell is Roger? With the Mohawk. I, I, I sold him to the Mohawk. You sold him? <laughs> Bree. Oh. I thought he violated your cousin. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. I'm so sorry, mistress. You should be. Your assignment? Capture the boldest, flirtiest lashes. But lose the book. Maybelline introduces One by One Volume Express Mascara. Your weapon? The revolutionary lash catcher brush. Captures coats, and deep clumps every lash all at once. Make some bolder. One by one. Make some flirtier. One by one. For bold lashes without the bulk. The old one by one trick. One by one. New from Maybelline. Now you would still like to speak with your fiance. Would you consider taking him back? You know what? People have been asking me that, and I'm really a little confused at this time, but um, I want an answer, and then I'll have to just take it from there. Well, unless you call in long distance, you're not going to get an answer, because as we saw earlier, her man's in Tahiti. Have you considered castration as an option? <laughs> no. Aren't you furious? I think he's really, really suffering. I would be so furious. But we wondered, what would happen if we reversed the sexes? What if the victim were a man and the abuser a woman? You want to start with me? This time, she plays the aggressor, verbally and physically abusing her boyfriend. How's that? How's that? Women abusing, even assaulting their male partners. Not as isolated as you might think. I hate you! psychology professor Carrie Keating. It is a big problem in this country. Men create more damage, but women hit more than men do. Now we're about to meet a woman whose reaction is instant, visceral. Watch closely. No, get up. No. Watch it calm down. What went through her mind? Good for her. You go, girl. <laughs> Linda McCluthy just assumed he had it coming to him. But why? Maybe she caught him cheating or something like that, really bad, and that made her lose it. My first thought was that he must have cheated on her. But you I mean, don't know that. I, you don't, but... You look guilty. Exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and now, over and over again, when the victim is a man, so many women perceive him as guilty. I figure, well, he probably deserved it. According to the Orange County DA's office, Catherine Q. Becker is accused of cutting off her husband's penis with a knife, uh, taking his penis, and throwing it into the garbage disposal. <laughs> She's been charged with felony torture and aggravated mayhem. Police say Becker attacked him because he filed for divorce. She's being held. She goes, that'll teach him. <laughs> she is being held in a California jail while her husband remains in the hospital. I bet you that those prison guards are wearing one of those, what are those things that <laughs> football is wearing? 
those oh, metal the, cups. Oh, yeah, the, uh, that the athletes wear? Yes, the yes. Jock strap? Cups, cups. Cups, cups. Yeah. yes. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know why he filed for divorce. I don't know what was going on between them. However, <laughs> I do think it's quite fabulous. I mean... <laughs> And that thing whizzing around the disposal. It's like yeah. hysterical. 286 scholarly investigations demonstrate that women are as physically aggressive, or more aggressive, than men in their relationships with their spouses or male partners.